first we're going to ask ourselves, what does empathy mean? Maybe sometimes people ask you to have empathy. Sometimes you've heard other people say they wish people in general had more empathy. What does empathy mean? Is it like kindness? Is it like listening? Is it like watching what's going on with someone else? We're going to explore it using this book, Stand in My Shoes, by Bob Sorensen, illustrated by Shelley Johannes. Emily, this is the fourth time you've barged into my room. I'm trying to study for a big test. I just want to talk to you, Emily whined. Alicia closed her book and said, can't you have a little empathy? Emily had no idea what her big sister meant. What's empathy? Empathy is when you understand how someone is feeling because you imagine what it's like to be them or stand in their shoes. People are grateful when you notice how they feel. I'm worried about my test, and I really appreciate it if you'd scram so I can study. Emily was grumpy as she left her sister's room, but she thought about Alicia's words. Would people really appreciate it if she noticed how they felt? The next morning, Emily went to the kitchen for breakfast. Her dad was making coffee and spilled some coffee grounds. He didn't look very happy. Dad, are you in a hurry? She asked. Yes, sweetie, I have a big presentation at work, and I need to get going. Emily found a wet dish rag. You look tired, Dad. How about if I clean up the coffee while you get your other stuff together? Would that help? For a moment, Emily's dad just looked at her. Then he hugged her. You're the best, Em, he said as he grabbed his coat and hurried out the back door. It was drizzling outside as Emily waited for the school bus. As it pulled up, one of the older kids accidentally knocked down a little girl as she was getting onto the bus. Rosie lost her balance and sat down hard on the wet cement. Hey, yelled Emily, watch out for the little kids. Then Emily turned to the little girl. Well, that's a yucky way to start the day. I'm okay, Rosie replied, but she struggled with her heavy backpack. Emily took Rosie's hand and pulled her up and helped her onto the bus. In class, Mrs. Fitch was not her usual laughing self. After the morning writing lesson, Mrs. Fitch went back to her desk instead of walking around the classroom like she usually did. Emily noticed that her teacher's eyes were red and that she wiped her nose on a tissue. Mrs. Fitch, is there something wrong? My little dog, Buster died last night, she said quietly. He was very sick. We were hoping he'd get better, but he didn't. Oh no, said Emily. I'm not sure how you feel, but it has to hurt. It does. Thank you for asking. In the cafeteria, she noticed Mrs. Waddle struggling to lift a tray of steamed vegetables into its place in the serving line. That sure looks heavily, Emily said. It is, Mrs. Waddle said. I get a workout every time I serve lunch. That's quite a load of stuff, Emily said to Mr. Redmond as he pushed the cart down the hallway. I just hope I don't run somebody over. Emily decided to walk in front of the cart, yelling in a loud, clear voice, coming through, art cart coming through. Get out of my way, Tommy said as he pushed Samantha. Emily's friend, out of the line. It's my turn. Tommy did this a lot at recess. Tommy, how would you like it if I pushed you out of line when you were waiting for a turn? Probably not good, Tommy replied. I love the tire swing. Samantha loves it as much as you do, so don't push her and try and take cuts, okay? Sorry, mumbled Tommy as he walked to the end of the line. After school, Mr. Peterson said, Hello, Emily. I hope you had a wonderful day. She stopped and looked at him. I did have a wonderful day. 
But Mr. Peterson, every day you say something nice to me. You never forget. As she walked to her seat, Emily could hear Mr. Peterson greet each child as they got on the bus. She sat down next to Samantha. When the seats were almost full, Rosie rushed onto the bus, out of breath. Oh no, there isn't a place for me. Emily nudged Samantha and then asked her to slide over. Rosie, you can sit with us. I can? Thanks. When Emily got home, her mom asked, How was your day, Em? You look deep in thought. I'm fine, but I'm wondering about something. What's that? You always seem to notice how I'm feeling. Part of being a mom. But how about you? Who notices how you're feeling? asked Emily. Wow, Em, said her mom. That's a very thoughtful question. I guess the answer is, Aunt Carla, and my friends Nancy, and Shauna, and mostly your dad. Sometimes Alicia, and now you. Why do you ask? Just wondering, said Emily. I'm starving. Is there anything good for a snack? Let's make something together. It was almost bedtime. Emily could see Alicia studying in her room. Instead of barging in, Emily knocked on the door. Can I come in or are you busy? You look like you want to talk, said Alicia. Come on in. I've been noticing how people feel, Emily said. You know, that empathy stuff. So what happened? What did you learn? People really like it when you recognize how they feel. Just noticing seems to touch their hearts. You got it, Em. But there's something more. When I care enough to notice how others feel, something changes inside of me, Emily explained. Sounds like you enjoy that feeling. Yes, I do, replied Emily. Good, now get out of here so I can study. The end. So now that we've read the book, what do you think empathy means? Is empathy important? Does it make life happier? Good food for thought. See you next time.